checking the intercooler and intercooler pipes on a Skoda Fabia Mark 1, 99 to 2007. If your Fabia is a diesel turbo version, it'll have an intercooler that cools charged air from the turbo back into the intake system. And as we have oil vapour entering the pipes through the PCV system, which is perfectly normal, it can, over time, build up in the pipes at the bottom near the intercooler. If you find that you've got excessive amounts of oil in this area, it could be due to turbo seals leaking or the bearings wearing out. As this car's done over 130,000 miles, it's probably worth taking the pipes and intercooler off to have a look and inspect it. But first I'll take the top pipe off. Remove the engine cover, that just lifts up and forwards. Now take your pipe wrenches and squeeze together the clip and then slide off the pipe. Do the same with the pipe running down to the intercooler. Unclip the vacuum pipes and remove from the car. Now we want to go underneath the car and remove the under tray. There's a series of T25 screws. Take all those out. And then unhook it from the front, go and pull it back slightly and then pull it forward and remove it. With the under tray out you can now get access to the bottom pipe and you can take that off to inspect it if you want. You'll probably find some oil in there and if there is just drain it out. As I said a, a little bit of oil is okay but loads of it and you might want to suspect the turbo seals and bearing. But I'm going to take off the whole intercooler so we'll need to take the bumper off to do that. I'll just run through this quickly if you want a more detailed version of how to do this and I'll leave a link at the end of the video and in the description. Take out the T25s under the wheel arch. On each side, then a further two T25s on each corner underneath the front of the bumper, just here. Then remove the pin lock clips running under the front bumper sill and finally loosen but don't take out the T30 screws right at the front. Detach the bumper at the sides along the seam where it joins the wing. You just need to sort of pull up and forward for this. Once you've done that then take out the two T30 screws at the front and lower the bumper to the ground. Detach the electrical connections on each side and remove away from the car. Once the bumper's off you can easily get to the intercooler just here with the plastic ducting attached to the front which we'll take off in a minute. And if you look around the back you can see the bottom pipe again and the mounting bolts that holds the intercooler on. The top pipe is a little bit harder to see, but it basically goes up into the engine to join onto the pipe that you took off. You can also see the map sensor with the various coloured wires attached. You can just see the side of the sensor block just here, in line with the pipe. So to take the plastic ducting off, I want to slowly undo these clips at the top. You just bend them in a little bit, pull the ducting forward, then go underneath and you need to detach the loop that's on the spigot being careful not to break it. The ducting actually fits inside onto the face of the intercooler which you just have to lift out a little bit before you can get this loop connection off. My fixing bolts were a bit rusty so I sprayed them with penetrating fluid and then I had to wire brush the threads on the back of the nut holder as the bolts projected through this and were quite corroded. I couldn't quite get my wire brush around the other side of the threads so I turned the bolt 180 degrees. Let that soak a while and then go underneath the car and take the clip off the bottom hose.
Now we can take the bolts out. We used a long extension for this on a quarter inch tool set and the bolts are 10 millimeters. Take those both out. Then there's the third bolt and the bottom right of the intercooler. Just down here. Take that one out. Disconnect your map sensor or manifold absolute pressure sensor. It's just got your standard bag clip on it. Although I noticed that this one's broken, so that indicates to me that this has been off before, but not under my ownership. Yes, definitely broken. Looks like the centre piece has come out, probably with somebody forcing it. Oh well, never mind. It seems quite a tight fit, so I'll probably get away with that for now. Now we can take it out, all we need to do is disconnect the bottom pipe. Now it's a simple case of just feeding the top pipe through the hole and it will just easily come out. You should take note here guys that you should really wear um, some gloves, which I would usually do, but I've actually run out of them. So Uncle Bob will have to go and buy some new ones. And when I took it off I didn't quite notice that and I looked down and found quite a bit of oil on the ground, which must have come out of the bottom of the intercooler. So if we look in the bottom of the intercooler, You can see where all the oil's collected. So it's up at the top here, which is at the bottom. All that shiny black stuff, which I'll clean out. So here's the intercooler, and this is the, the map sensor on, on the top here, which if it's faulty, it will affect the running of the engine. You'll notice the uh, various things, uh, poor economy, lack of power, lack of acceleration, poor idle, surging, smelly exhaust, probably smoke in the exhaust as well. Obviously the top pipe will be relatively clean of oil. Check all the pipes for splitting as that will have a detrimental effect on the running of the engine. And here's the space where the intercooler went. Look at the bottom pipe, that'll need cleaning out as well. Just going to put something down on the ground and then get a receptacle. And I'm just going to pour it out, leave that to empty itself, get the majority of it out, and leave that for a while and then come back to it. To see how much oil that's dripped out. Here we are, and you can see that. This has never been cleaned out at all, uh, it's done 130 odd thousand miles, which is about 210,000 kilometres. And at the moment, there's no detriment to the performance, the acceleration's okay, the turbo seems to be working fine. But I will have a look at that in the near future, as it would be quite good to see if there is any wear there. Putting the intercooler back, it's just a simple reversal procedure. You just feed the pipe up in the hole, reconnect the electrical connection on the map sensor. A little bit of jiggling about a bit. Reconnect the lower pipe. Put all the bolts back. And screw them home nice and tight. Don't forget to reattach the metal pipe clip and the top intercooler pipe and clips and then the vacuum pipes. Take care when you're refitting the ducting. 
and remember that part of it fits inside the uh, radiator face just here like that just lips over once you've got that in place you can just uh, push home the two top clips that's on nice and securely and it's getting a little bit cold and chilly I'm gonna wait for it to stop snowing before I put the bumper back on oh well I'll go in and have a cup of tea and edit the video as it won't take two minutes to put the bumper back on now where was I where's that winter shot ah here it is one winter shot insert ah it's looking a lot better now I'll put the bumper back on attach the connections pull it back onto the seam nicely smoothed out there all done jobs are good thank you for watching and doing this video has given me the idea of doing a video on the map sensor and the turbo so I expect to see those in the coming future and as always like share and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video